Hello, hello, this is Alice. If you're new to the channel, welcome. And if you've been with me for a while, welcome back. You know the drill, turn on the 4K resolution on the video. This is the 10th video of the channel. So it's definitely a pretty significant milestone for myself. Lots of personal growth throughout this YouTube journey. So in celebration, I'm going to be giving away these two pens. And when I reach 500 subs, which is hopefully imminent, a friend of mine has generously donated two pens just like these and they're being shipped to me from Philippines and you see what's special? They got moving stuff in them, so it's cascading pens. When those arrive, I'll definitely review more details. It's been about six months of me getting into this hobby. Let's take a look at what kits I did finish, what kits I have not yet finished but started, and what kits I might start later on in 2023. Side note, there's a kit that Andrew doesn't even know I've been working on for Valentine's Day yet. So sit back and relax, perhaps grab out your whip and let's take some trips down the memory lane. So this is my first ever finish. It's called Cho. It's from Diamond Dots and I actually gave it away for a friend for a housewarming when she moved to a new place. It's all round and it took me about a month. I say that's not bad for my first painting. We got it on the Bruce Peninsula in Canada while we were visiting family because Andrew over here Hello! Hi, and this is Andrew, my boyfriend. So we were visiting family and we rented a cottage on the Bruce Peninsula. So we were walking into a home hardware store, so it's kind of the Canadian equivalent of small Home Depot. Yeah, maybe or Ace, Ace Hardware. hardware yeah. right? So we were in the home hardware and we were looking for some supply for the cottage. and. And he was like, oh look, there's an arts and craft aisle. Yeah, I know she likes arts and crafts, so this place had like a weird second floor where they had like puzzles and games and they had some uh, kind of knockoff diamond paintings and we didn't know what they were at the time. I just saw this canvas with these little drill, you know, bead drill kind of things and we thought, oh, it'd be kind of fun, but I was like, ah, we don't need it. We're only here for a couple of weeks. We probably won't finish it. So we just kind of left it in the store and went about our day, I guess. <laughs> yeah, and then we went home. We still itching for it, so we went up, look it up on YouTube. It looks a little time consuming, so Andrew's not sure whether I like it. But then we had a date night in Owen Sound. Yeah, we went for a little drive, like half hour from the cabin, and we had dinner, and there was a Michael's in the same parking lot. So we went over for a little shopping and walk around, and they had Diamond Dots, which is obviously a more serious uh, brand for this kind of hobby, and we decided to pick one up. I think it was like $45 or something. Yeah, I would say Diamond Dots is probably one of the first brands that people would come across when they get into this hobby because it's widely sold at Michael's, especially in Canada. And it seemed pretty high quality. And lo and behold, a few paintings later, and then I got into a video, which I'll talk about. And um, here's my 10th video. Andrew helped me edit my first few videos, and then through the progress, uh, throughout the process, I sort of learned to edit videos myself. So we all have Andrew here to thank hmm. for this channel. Thank you, Bobo. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> so yeah, this is sort of my story of how I got into this hobby and why sometimes you guys see he would help me paint. There's some more hilarious stories that you'll get to know throughout my journey on YouTube. But sometimes he paint with me, sometimes he sit next to me doing his own stuff while I'm painting. So yeah. Nice. All right. <laughs> So the second kit I've completed of all time is Moms Are the Real Superheroes from Diamond Art Club. This is a kit I specifically did for a friend of ours who is a new mom, recently had a newborn. It's my second kit ever and it's a full square kit and it's a bit of a challenge because it's the first time I did a square kit. I didn't know how it was going to go. I thought I was going to spend a lot of time aligning them. But as it turns out, it's actually not that hard to align them and Diamond Art Club square drills are really high quality, does not leave that much of a gap. So it went easier than I thought. I made this kit specifically for her because she's having a newborn. Even though I know she's a really, really strong girl, but you know, new mom times, baby crying at night and stuff like that. You get exhausted sometimes. So I had a hidden message inside here that I hope she has discovered by now. So if you're watching this friend and you haven't discovered it, there's a hidden message inside here. Instead of the generic statement that says moms are the superheroes, which is plural in all of it and a bit of a generic sentence, I made this message say mom is the superhero. So when she put her baby down sometimes, turn off the light, the baby's sleeping, but she feels so exhausted for the whole day, I hope this gives her a bit of an energy and you know, a bit of a joy. 
The way I redid this letter is to show the hidden message inside here, but when you don't have the lights off, you don't see it at all, is I first put down the letters A-R-E, the way DAC charted it, onto a grid paper. And then I use a different color pen to chart out how I want the I-S to look and make sure that it's fully within the letter A-R-E. If you ever feel creative, want to overwrite some letters, this is the channel to follow because I also like to modify some of my paintings, either change it to different colors or different letter writing or perhaps different characters altogether, which I will try to do for another kit I'm working on right now. So stay tuned. This is my third finish of all time, Pink Mermaid from Diamond Art Club. It's a all square kit as well and I really like it. It's got a lot of pastel shades and to look at it in more details because it's the first canvas I try to blend up as much as possible. I really bought a lot of sparklers over here. So some modifications I made, for example, in the original picture in the rendering, the leaves over here really have a very similar color to the hair's edge. And I really wanted to make it stand out such that it's kind of like separate from hair from the leaf. Therefore, I use a lot of crystals over here and all over the edge of the hair to make sure it stands out. And this is hair, this is a leaf. Uh, but also, the reason I highlighted all the edges of the hair with the crystals is because I want it to look a bit like the hair is blowing in the wind and the sunshine is shining through. So, you know, the edge of hair has some sheen kind of look. So that's the look I was going for. I probably went a little bit overboard, but I had a lot of fun. I also replaced some diamonds here with the crystals. Um, I also replaced some diamonds here with clear crystals, sparklers. These are rounds because these to me looks more like an accessory that she's wearing on her head. So I made it more jewelry like. And also this hair piece over here, I replaced it all with mostly pearls as well as this one going down, these ones. Yeah, I replaced a lot of diamonds in here because I feel like these hair accessories should be made of pearls, given that she is a mermaid, you know? So yeah. There are also some other modifications I made specifically around her face in the middle. So let me zoom in a little bit to show you. So I'm gonna put the original image on the side as a reference as well. The original eye color was pink, but I replaced it with a lot of green shade crystals because, you know, human eyes, or in this case, mermaid eyes, she look a little bit more crystal-y like instead of solid colors. And I also want her eyes to be more green to sort of, you know, complementing the seaweeds on here instead of being all the same color with her hair. So that's why I made her eye really, really pop with the green crystals. I also modified her mouth over here because in the original image she had her tongue sticking out touching her upper lip that was a little bit more provocative than we like for this image so that's why i made this modification and last little detail is i changed the diamonds out here for all these dots that are supposedly i think her scale that are basically reflecting sunlight as well in the original image they don't really stand out they kind of just reflect their points right but when they did the rendering, they were all using solid color diamonds and I thought that was standing out a bit too much. That's why I replaced them with sparklers for squares. They are round diamonds that are made into the size that would fit into the space of a square diamond. So they would stand out a little bit less. So that's why I made that modification as well. So as you know, I like making my modifications and this is the Spoken Rock channel right again. So this is my fourth finish of the year of all time. I actually featured it in my glamping and camping video that I'll link up here. Uh, if you missed it, basically Andrew and I took this diamond painting onto a camping trip with us during Thanksgiving. We did some giveaway funds and we used some Dyson Space Heater, yada yada yada, talk about some conveyor belt sushi and stuff like that. So if you missed that, feel free to check it out and put it into your watch later list. Um, but long story short, it's a pretty simple painting, but we did a weekend challenge on it. So we did this as much as fast as possible and we finished it in two days. I made sure to add a bit of a little touch up here with a little star on top of a Christmas tree, just like you would have at home. And 
We also used this at our actual home when our family came over for holidays during Christmas because we have a little small place and it's also the first time we have family over so we didn't buy a Christmas tree. But you know, for Christmas morning opening gifts and stuff, we use this as the official Christmas tree where we put our gifts under. So that was cute. Here is my fifth finish of all time. It's so huge, I could barely show you right next to me standing up. So to show you more details, let me put it back onto the coffee table. Here it is. I also have to hold the side up because otherwise it would just strafe off the table. That tells you how big it is. It is 70 by 89 centimeters. So this is definitely a pretty big size. It took me three months. I did it for Drills and Trolls at first, but I took a work trip to Orlando and then there are some other interruptions. And just because it's a big painting in general, I didn't finish it in time for Drills and Trolls. It was one month overdue out of a two month event. But I love spending my time blending this up with all the eyes, the cats, this cat, the candles, and all these spell sheets and especially the fire over here. I'll link the video up here for the video where I talk about more details in how I blend it up. I definitely had a lot of fun of that. However, the downside of this kit is it had way too many gray shades. So that's lesson learned going forward that I have to resist buying kits that look super duper cute like this one, you know, her winky eyes and the kitties um, because when it has so many different shades, especially dark shades in the background, I really did not enjoy working on them when I'm in these areas. So I was a little bummed without that. However, the finished results, as you can see, super duper cute. It makes it all worth it. Just a little bit lesson learned going forward. And unfortunately, there's one drill that fell off, but in general, all the other drills have stayed on. It's just because I stored it rolling rolling inside so yeah i have to patch that up sometime all right so i finished five paintings in 2022 i say it's not bad because i started in june it's been about six ish months and one of them was so big i would say i averaged about one painting per month i give myself a bit of a slack because i got a full-time job i also started making youtube video for you guys so i say the progress is not bad and with that being said, here are some of the paintings that I'm still working on, whipping into 2023. This is the sixth painting of all time, or the first whip. It's Azure from DIY Moon Shop or Diamond Shop by Margaret Morales. And sometimes I nickname it the Blue Girl when I'm talking to Andrew about it. Um, to show you more details, let me put it on the coffee table. So this kit has been okay so far overall. The rendering is not as crisp as, you know, Diamond Art Club, but it's also originally a watercolor painting. So it's really hard to render a watercolor painting without making it looking too crisp, which is sort of Diamond Art Club style or making it look a little dotty, spotty at some areas of this one. So I will keep working on it. I like it. I just don't know if I'll do another full crystal kit like this one. Uh, reason being, sometimes I work on this painting a little bit while sitting on the couch. So I put it onto a piece of plexiglass that about this big while I sit on the side of the couch and dotting and Andrew's working on his thing, you know? And um, I noticed sometimes the edge where I put the board, it would have one or two diamonds or crystals falling off. So that's not ideal. So I'll let you know, of course, when I do a post review video, whether I end up using a sealant to seal this painting. I heard mixed reviews because some people I've seen, they use things that people use to finish furniture, wood and stuff like that. And I wonder whether that would either yellow over time or worse is um, crack. So I definitely don't want that. I gotta do a bunch of research and I'll share with you guys. So stay tuned. Uh, second thing is I noticed that the usual putty and waxes that I'm used to using or love using on resin diamonds, they don't work as well on these crystals. So I experimented a bunch but always had a bit of a struggle, so which is why this one is a little slow going as well. But recently I got this sample from my order from DP with sparklers um, because 
is from this new shop I haven't tried before. So if you want to scan the QR code and give the shop a visit, basically it's another putty, but it seems to work really well for the crystal. So I'm going to keep using to finish this one. So yeah, this is the blue girl. Here is my second whip into 2023, but also my seventh of all time. It's still in this baggie, not because I haven't started it, but because I travel with it. When I went to Orlando on that business trip, um, I put it in here and stuff it into my luggage. And Julie didn't even know about this. Um, because it's a kit meant for us for Valentine's and um, I didn't want him to have seen it. That's also another reason I learned to edit videos myself so that I'm gonna edit this video myself so that he doesn't see it yet. But anyway, this is how far along I am. It's the image you are my lobster, which is describing Ross and Rachel of the movie of the TV show Friends. And it's one of our show that we just put in the background while I'm done painting and he's working on something else and stuff like that. This is annoying though because all the diamonds, especially the light blue ones in here, they are the old diamonds which has different facets. So this is actually the first kit I worked on from Diamond Art Club that still had the whole diamond with different facets. And I'm like being super OCD about it. I see how long that will last, but I'm doing checkerboard so that I did all of these that are the same facets and then I'm going to fill in all of them with the different facet ones. Let's see how long this lasts. I don't promise to do all of it this way because I got to finish by February 14th. Wish me luck. But yeah, I briefly mentioned I'm gonna make some modifications because I hint hint asked Andrew, do you like monkeys when I was working on this? Because I plan on modify this picture so that it's more like Andrew and me uh, with different characteristics of us going into it instead of Ross and Rachel. And Andrew said, no really. And when you piss them off in the zoo, they will throw their poo poos at you. So I guess, I guess I'm gonna have to erase this monkey and put something else there. So yeah, when I finish modifying this and give it to Andrew, there'll be another video about that. And this is the eighth one of all time and also my third whip into 2023. It's Fly Me to the Moon from Diamond Painting Deutschland by Josephine Wall. And it's double-sided adhesive, so I'm not going to peel it away. It's difficult to manage. And this is how much I got done so far. And there is, I'm going to link the video up there for a recent update on how I felt completing this section. Overall, long story short, it's a pretty difficult and large project. Um, I don't think, given the size, I will work on just this one the entire year because that might be how long it will take me. At least I can't work on this single threaded at once. So I'm gonna have to intertwine this with other projects that I mentioned and will mention and work on it in spurts perhaps when I feel like I'm in a challenge kind of mood. If you haven't seen this kit before, I'll link a playlist for you to catch up. But basically this is what it looks like for now. And I'll put the original image right here. So if you want to stay tuned about how I'm doing on this kit from time to time, subscribe. All right, here is my last whip into 2023. It's actually a mystery. So if you are not sure if you want to see the spoilers, I suggest that you look away now, but you can keep the audio on because I will not have any spoiler in my talking through this kit, but I'm going to show what it looks like so far. You ready to look away? One, two, three. So it's also a humongous painting. It's the Floral Mystery from Diamond Art Club by Indoor and I think Artbeat Studio. Uh, to show you more details, I put it back onto the coffee table again and this is very pretty. This is actually the kit I started working on after I was working on Moms Are the Superheroes because I just love, love the image. I already figured out what it was and I wanted to do this. 
but it is so freaking confetti heavy. It being my third kit, I was like, I am not ready for this level of confetti. Absolutely not. Even though it looks so pretty, the amount I have got done. I even managed to make some modifications that I wanted, but it just felt too much of confetti at the time. That's why I moved on to my next kit and next kit. And then you guys know the rest of the story. I bought uh, Fly Me to the Moon because I also fell in love with that image. I didn't even think about how I felt this one was already too confetti heavy. What was I thinking getting into a diamond painting Dorsten kit as if that's any easier? Ha <laughs> ha, joke's on me. But I really, really love this image, so I totally don't mind that I'm taking my time. I want to savor it. It's the kind of painting that I might even be a little sad when I finish it because I don't get to work on the intricate detail in this anymore. So I don't mind that I haven't finished it. I'll work on it when I'm it's kind of saving for a rainy day type of kit. So, also just rotating it around in case you're watching on a computer or a TV screen so that you can see it in its original direction. And I'll zoom out. As you can see, I'm probably only a third of the way through, or not even because I haven't completed this section. But it's gonna look really good when it's done, I just know it. In the original rendering, these letters here were in a different color that's different from the original image, which I'll also put here. And I like to stay as close to the original as possible over here. So this is why I substituted this little area here. Okay, I'm gonna have to stop talking about it because I tried as hard as possible to not have any audio spoiler. So let's move on. In summary, those are the five paintings I finished in 2022, a few that I'm whipping into this year, and let's talk about what else I'm thinking about working on in 2023. First of all, this is the artist room from Miss Butter D. And I also got my hands onto which bedroom, which is on its way to me. So when that one arrives, I'll unbox the two of them together because they are by the same artist. They are really pastel color templates and totally gave me a new fond love of all the pastel colors that uh, make me looking for pastel kits. And since you watch all the way towards the end of the video, I assume you're interested in the giveaway pens. So. If you're interested in this one, the keyword will be lavender. And this is the second one. It's got blue butterflies and silver swirls all throughout it and some silver accents over here. So if you're interested in this one, the keyword for this one is silver. I'll draw a winner for each of them, but if you don't respond, I'm just gonna pass because the last time I did a giveaway, I made it a little too complicated. So yeah, the deadline for entering this one would be a little longer. I'm gonna make it all the way into the third week of January. I'll put the, week, put the date here and I wish you luck. I know I said I'm gonna talk about what I wanna work on in 2023, but you know, you make the plan, you execute the plan, you expect the plan to get derailed and you just throw away the plan. So these are just my thoughts, not necessarily set in stone, but I'm also looking forward to the Lunar New Year Kitty. I definitely have to finish the Azure, the Blue Girl ASAP, as well as the Valentine's gift for Andrew and I. So I'll have to see how I schedule them around the events and the timelines. After that, there are definitely times where I want to work on round kits in between square kits so depending on which one I finish first, I'll probably also put artist room at the front of my stack. I also want to work on this fish picture for good luck because in my culture, fish in the water has a really good meaning, basically indicating that everything you try to do will go the way you plan or want as if fish is in the water. So I would love this painting on my office wall. And in the summer, I definitely plan on participating in Summer with the Masters 2023. I already mentioned I'm gonna work on Prime Rose. 
If in any luck or by some miracle, I finish it quicker than I expected, I'll also work on Zodiac, but that's a really ambitious plan. I'm not sure what I'm gonna work on between summer and winter, but one thing I know for sure is for the winter, I'm gonna work on Christmas delivery. I already got it this year, but I didn't have enough time to even start on it. So for the next year, I want it ready for be Christmas. There are also so many other kids in my stash that are just begging for me to open because they're so pretty, but I know it's been a really, really long video. If you watch all the way until the very end, thank you very much for your time. If you'd like to stay up to date to what kid I'm working on and what I'm planning on working on next, I probably post on Instagram first before I can make a video, so feel free to follow me there. With that being said, I hope we stay in touch and I'll see you next time. Bye!